with the session. Thank you all for joining and Thank you. Thank you, Nitin, sir. Uh, before I start my uh, uh, reading the untold story of Sita, I would like to pay gratitude to Patri, sir, who has left his body. And uh, I felt uh, like many others that, you know, they have lost their Thank role model, all. but he's always here with us. He's always, always here with us. So Patri, sir, has changed many lives, uh, many souls he has uh, transformed. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you guys can all relate to what I'm trying to say here. He has changed my life in one year. Literally in one year, I have a total 360 degree U-turn in my life. And I, I, I just don't have words to pay my gratitude. Patri, sir, I know you're always with all of us, always taking care of us as always. And uh, in fact, last night also, uh, yesterday when I was meditating in the evening, he came in my vision. I um, I treat Krishna as my brother. I even do Rakhi because we are three sisters. So we didn't have a brother. So my grandma used to say, you know, uh, give uh, tie Rakhi to Krishna and Krishna will bless you with the brother. So, and uh, the vision that I got, uh, a 10, 12 year old boy is, uh, you know, coming and running around. So I say, Krishna, are you coming to bless me? And then, you know how the village pump, water pump, so Krishna starts taking a shower and uh, the baby body, the child body, but the Patrisar's head. And then he says, uh, you, you're complaining. So I have never met Patrisar in person. The only time I did talk to him was on the Zoom. So Patrisar is telling me, Surbi, you're complaining to me that I have never met you in person and I left my body without uh, meeting you in person. But have you ever met Krishna? No, right? He's telling me all this in the vision. And uh, he's like... Uh, you have never met Krishna, but then still you love Krishna. I am there with Krishna. You are, I am Krishna. Krishna is in me. I am in Krishna. So you should never feel that uh, I have ever left you. I was there like Krishna. I will be there like Krishna. I will always, always with, be, will, with, with everybody, uh, whoever has faith. So please keep the faith. Last three days, I was literally crying like a baby. Uh, but uh, after last night, uh, yesterday evening's meditation, I have got a little peace uh, that, you know, Patrisar has not left. He's always with, be with all of us. Um, so my heartiest uh, gratitude, my full love, 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 love to the great, great master. Thank you everyone for listening to my little Shardhanjali that I had for Patrisar. I, that's the, how I got connected with him, with all of you. This Surbi was nothing. Nobody knew about me, but now so many people know about me. They love me. I've gotten sweet people, great masters like you who want to meet with me, who want to love me. Um, there's no words. Uh, like one family uh, came from New Jersey last uh, uh, couple of weeks ago. We, they were in Virginia and they met with me just like as if we we always known them and they met me first time in person. Like... I do uh, meditation sessions on New Jersey platform. And in fact, this weekend I'm traveling to New Jersey for some other reason and they know about it. And so the family is inviting me to New Jersey to their home. People have opened their doors for me. Like Bikshita, I have worked with her so long in kids se sessions. And she's like, anytime you come Didi to T Dallas, you have to come to my house. You have to meet my family. People in Australia want to come, you know, inviting me. So, you know, the sweet family that I'm getting from all of the love Patrisar has given me this new meditation family, the love that I'm getting from all of you. Thank you for that, all, all that love. And I, I only got this love because of Patrisar. So I love you, Patrisar. Thank you, everyone, for being here. So I will start uh, my story, uh, Sita and story today, the untold story of Sita. So last uh, chapter that we heard was from Minakshi. Minakshi uh, ends up being Sita Mata's uh, nanny, you can, as you can say. And uh, she considered herself uh, a cursed child. We don't know what the curse was, but uh, you know the father keeps on reminding the daughter that it, they come from a cursed family. And so they are indebted to Janak Baba for the rest of their lives. So this chapter two is the arrival of Sita. Many years have uh, there was a drought in uh, the kingdom. And they said that drought was happening because the other parts of the world were causing this disruption. Yeah, and Janak Baba always 
taught us that any problem in our life comes, it always comes for, to teach us a lesson. This sentence is very important because at some point, love and push will also say the same sentence as their grandfather. So, uh, and Sita Mata took this memory of her father and she also taught that lesson to her own kids. And we also have to learn this, that any problem that comes, we should not treat that problem as a problem. We should treat what is, why is this problem here? To, what is it here to teach us? So learn a lesson from them. So the culti so this drought that came and the drought that came was a result of negative forces. And so this drought caused a lot of shift in the earth. And so the new ways of cultivating food was needed. So one day Janak Baba was meditating. A Devi appeared in, uh, in a form of water. And she says, you can use this water to nurture your crops. Janak Baba did not understand what the Devi was trying to tell, um, tell him. So then Devi guided Janak Baba how to draw ridges and furrows. You know how in the villages they make lanes and kind of water to go through to the uh, to the uh, crops so because the rain is not coming right so the water could flow into the fields and uh, you know people can get crops and uh, people can be fed so this helped Minakshi so this again this chapter is also being narrated by Minakshi so Minakshi says this helped for a few weeks but since there was no rains the flow of river was also getting less and less and people were going hungry so far, uh, so one day what happened was that one of the servants, as I mentioned in the last chapter, that, uh, you know, they didn't have enough food. So what they did, the servant says, no, with the, we, I'm going to not feed you, only one, two plates are left for king and the queen. So when the Janak Baba found out that because of the drought, people are not being fed and one couple got kicked out of their kitchen, Janak Baba's promise that from now on, unless each and every person in their kingdom is fed for both husband and wife will not take any food so minakshi says so far so far uh, uh, mithila was very self sufficient people they didn't need any help from anybody but since the scarcity of food was happening they had to seek out help so in this time of their need their help came through kosala which is uh, known as ayodhya the, the capital was ayodhya and king dashrath came to help for them so now Janak Baba was a, a very uh, kind of a person uh, who would be like, I should not, if I'm taking a, a gift from somebody in a form of crops, I should be able to return. He didn't want it to be indebted to Dashrath, uh, King Dashrath, that, you know, I'm just taking, taking, taking and not giving anybody return to anybody. Like, you know, if you're borrowing something from somebody, you want to return them in something in form of money, gratitude, services, something or the other. So uh, Raja Jana, King Jana, uh, King Dashrath found that, uh, you know, he, King Dashrath also was a very great person. So he found here, uh, he read his uh, King Janak's face and, you know, his emotions that, you know, the King Janak does, is not liking that he's just taking from me and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, uh, is not able to return back. So in just a friendly manner, he says, I have heard you have very good artists, artisans, you know, people who do the woodwork and stuff. So uh, can we borrow some of your artisans who can come work in my palace? So that gave Raja King Janak a very big relief. Like, you know, okay, I'm taking the crops from them. And, and in, fa in, in return, I'm giving them some artisans who can work uh, on their palaces. And that way, you know, the kind of, uh, I'm not just not taking, I'm just returning, it's giving something back in return. So at this point, Minakshi also says that both the king and queen were aging and they did not have any hires. Um, so who's going to rule the king after uh, a kingdom after Raja with the king Janak uh, leaves his body, right? So, uh, but uh, everybody in the kingdom had a very good uh, faith in the king that whatever the king will do is best for the kingdom. They never doubted King Janak because King Janak was more than a king. He was a father. He was a father figure to each and every person in their kingdom. So one day they found out that the king and queen are doing a special prayer ceremony for a special child and that to a girl child. Now, back then, every king wanted a boy to be their hire, well, you know, to follow on their path. But why a girl child? Nobody knew. So, but still people were not asked why the king is doing and praying. Okay, is one thing is agreeable, but why praying for a girl child? And, uh, but they knew that his vision 
was way beyond further that any normal person could think because remember Raja Janak is a saintly man. He spent most of his time with hermitages or the rishis, the saints and everybody. So he, he spent very less time in Mithila. So one day, one day, one uh, rishi, one uh, rishi, one saint's group was passing through their kingdom and he said, they met with Raja Janak. They said, Raja Janak, uh, King Janak, we heard that you are praying, doing a special prayer ceremony and that too for a girl child. So the, uh, is, is it true? So um, what King uh, Janak said is that I can feel some negative forces. This is a very important sentence. This is, this is what tells tells you that he is um, he is looking beyond his personal uh, needs. Personal need means that he is looking beyond what is good for not his family, that he should have a higher and, you know, move, rule to his, rule his kingdom, but per, beyond his personal projections. So he says that I can, uh, let me mute this person. Uh, Nitin, sir, can you please mute this Moto G7 power, please? So, thank you. Um, so what uh, uh, what Raja Janak said that I can feel that negative forces that ne are creating a lot of disturbances and to bring and to bring that balance and harmony on uh, Mother Earth. I have to bring Shakti herself. Shakti is a goddess, right? So Shakti herself come down to, uh, to this earth to balance the harmony, to balance the negative forces with harmony and love. So this tells how Raja Janak was beyond his looking, beyond his personal needs. So he, and that's why the meditation and the prayer ceremony kept on going for days and days. So Raja Janak had a habit. He would get up in the morning, just go to, okay, bye, Sunana. I'm leaving to this hermitage. I'm gone for so-and-so days. He had a habit of doing that. And Sunana Ma always stayed back behind to take care of the kingdom needs, taking care of his people. So some months had passed by and uh, the prayer ceremonies were still going on. So Raja Janak gets his uh, chariot ready and he tells Sunana, are you not coming with me? So Nana Ma is like, I never go with you. Why do I need to go with you? You always go by yourself to take care uh, uh, and to visit the hermitages. But uh, why do you want me to go? Raja Janak said one thing to her. Don't you want to welcome your daughter? And so Nana Ma was very excited. She dropped everything, got ready, and they were all got uh, went to the remotest part of their kingdom where there was biggest part of the drought where there was not rain you know literally no not a single drop of water has fallen in that piece of land that they went to that part of the kingdom and uh, the both of them sat down for meditation raja janak was a very big uh, meditator so as soon as he sat down he went into that deep meditation meditative state and uh, sunana ma was the first one who heard the most melodious uh, voice um, at this point, um, one of my New Jersey people said, uh, members, they said that, you know, it feels like, you know, how Bambi was born, you know, it, all the little animals were sitting down when they, when they came and uh, when Sita Mata, they could imagine what they saw in the Bambi movie. So with the Sita, Mata, uh, Sita Mata's melodious cry was first heard by uh, Sunanama and Sunanama gets Janak Baba out of that uh, uh, meditative state. And uh, Janak Baba picks up the baby and all the little rabbits, deers, everybody, all the little animals come and welcome Sita Mata. And, and what he says is this daughter is not here. This child is not for here for me or Sunana. She is here to take care of all of you, each and every person, uh, each and every animal, each and every plant on this earth, planet earth to take care of everybody she's here. And... Uh, all of a sudden the rain starts pouring, a lot of rain that the rain they had been looking forward starts pouring in. And uh, this, this was, and then they were very happy and they brought her home. Minakshi says, uh, coming back to the chapter of Minakshi, 
uh, Minakshi says that uh, Mina Aditi, you know, was the maid who were, who treated Minakshi. I'm going to pause that little story of Sita, how she comes home, but then this is what's going on in the palace. So Aditi, um, Aditi tells Minakshi that uh, Janak Baba wants to see you and your tapasya is complete. So Minakshi says, what tapasya? Tapasya means, you know, going into the uh, meditation and praying for many days without food and uh, water. So that's what tapasya means. So uh, Minakshi says, what tapasya? I am a mere servant. Why would I do any tapasya? You know, uh, tapasya is done by kings uh, who want a son to, or they need power or strength to, uh, you know, uh, go over some other kingdom. But I did not do any tapasya. So Aditi explains the hardships you have faced after your father left and while your father kept on telling you and the love that you missed from your father you know all that time you know you you, you have done your part so you know you, i'm just passing on your mess your message uh the king's message to you that the king wants to see you. minakshi is still confused that why the king wants uh you know i've been a good servant i've been a good daughter and so um uh, you know i try to be my best but why does the king wants to see me why does janak baba so she was kind of very scared to go near janak baba and sunena ma so she was happy with whatever she was doing with her life so raja janak says you know right now um i know you have been a good daughter good servant but I want you to be few days. I want you to take care of Sunanama and then I want you to take care of Sita Mata. So that's how she ends up becoming uh, Sita's nanny. So um, then Minakshi says, I'm very in gratitude that, you know, they gave me, uh, they gave me a shift in this place that, you know, now I'm not mopping the floors. I'm taking care of the queen herself and the baby herself. So Aditi, Aditi uh, at that night, uh, Minakshi Singh did Raja Janak or Aditi saw that shift because she felt a different change in herself. You know how from a non-meditator state, if you become a meditator, you feel a different situation, different state of your mind and your body. You feel everything is balanced versus when you are not meditating, right? So Minakshi says that I feel that shift in myself, that what my father was trying to teach me, that no job is... Uh, low or high and finally I have realized that my father was trying to teach me something different that what I was getting a wrong message from him I was interpreting his message differently so I see that shift in me different uh, finally so did Janak Baba see the shift that's why he gave me this different uh, job or Aditi saw this so she is not, she just leaves that thought and goes to bed she then uh, Minakshi then says that dignity was a big quality in Mithila Everybody was valued. You were rich, you were treated the same way, you were poor, you were treated the same way. If anybody had lost their parents, the kids would be taken care of, old people were taken care of. Raja Janak took care of everybody. And maybe that's why he took care of me as well, because I had no parents. So maybe out of, uh, you know, everybody was taken care of, and that's why I was taken care of. But I always think myself that some misfortune had befallen me, and that's why Raja Janak is taking care of me. So everybody lived in the society in accordance and happiness. And so there was no thought that somebody will be not taken care of in this kingdom. And she also says before, uh, you know, everything was coming from the jungles, the food and everything was coming from jungles. We didn't have to worry about everything was given. But after the drought, we had to take care of cultivation was done because, you know, initially they did cultivation and then Dashraja Dashrath gave them some food and uh, crops. But then eventually they started doing uh, cultivation. They had uh, the, even, even though they were growing food now, they had a deep gratitude for Mother Earth for providing a lot of food to them. And she also says that we always wanted to remind our coming generations to honor and uh, respect and be grateful to Mother Earth. And that feeling always became stronger as we, we grew up. Because, you know, Mother Earth has to be always taken care of. She's our mother. She provides us for everything. And uh, people of Mithila always restored that balance in the society. And Maharaj, Harsa, Maharaj the king himself, had uh, the rains were coming back because of prayers and his meditation. The prayers were always answered in form of after Sita Mata came in their life. Life was a little bit balanced. And when uh, people heard about uh, Sita Mata's arrival, everybody thought that the goddess had come in their life. And the king, Raja Janak, didn't want to correct them. They he thought they, like, if she, they want to think of her as a goddess, let them think that way. Because he, herself, he himself knew that you know, Sita was not a, any 
any normal when i say normal was any normal human being like you and me she knew that she he knew that she was a form of shakti and so that's why they named her sita because you know a seat is a is a um, seat is the front part of the furrow so that's why they named her named her sita so that ends up my chapter second um i will start my chapter 3 we will stop midway and then i will do a little bit review next week so we don't lose the connection okay so um anybody has any questions or chapter 2 you can raise your hands masters if you have any questions you can feel free to ask uh, subrit okay no okay we'll start with chapter 3 and then if you feel you guys have any questions after that we will stop um, at midpoint okay so sure. chapter 3 chapter 3 is um sita's education and minakshi is the one who's narrating this chapter again so that cute child that came in our life had changed everybody's life she was spinning everybody on her fingers everybody was dancing she would cry a little bit everybody would run the whole atmosphere in the palace had changed and the funny part was minakshi says the king himself who was considered as a meditator as a saint you know how the saints are they don't want to be interfered with anybody's life in mohamaya you know the love and affection was away from them they had nothing to do with anybody he himself that uh, king had stopped going to the hermitage as he was always around that child and so everybody uh, was near uh, everybody you know she took uh, she took everybody's attention uh, sita and out of love the cute another cute thing that happened was everybody felt like calling her mata and sunana ma one day funny in a funny way said do you guys realize that she is no mata she is a little child herself but some days she herself wanted to call her own child mata that was the love that the radiant radiance that uh, sita mata had out of her you know that uh, glow on her body that everybody just wanted to call her mata even though she was a child and um, as i said janak baba had stopped going to all the ashrams at this point no hermitages you know but then this certain invitation from this hermitage came and he could not stay you know he and he accepted the invitation so how you know imagine you have a little child in your house you always want to treat that little child as a big person so that's what raja janak did and so raja janak told her sita i'm going for a few days i'll see you in a few days and uh, all of sudden sita mata held janak baba's finger you know like this like a loop and uh, their eyes lock and uh, he says okay i'm taking you with me so nana ma goes taking her where she wants to come with me to the hermitage you cannot take a baby to the hermitage who is going to take care of her i cannot leave you are leaving and uh, you know i have to take care of the kingdom who is going to take care of the baby so after a lot of argument between the couple sunana so mai agrees okay she can go and only minakshi and the usha the other maid will go with her to take care of them so that uh, minakshi gets very excited minakshi has never left uh, her kingdom she's always been in the palace born in the palace and always being in the palace so she was very excited to the, for this trip and as people found out that sita mata the princess uh, the little baby princess uh, she is hasn't started walking that i like to give my characters a age so you guys know where how old they are so she hasn't taken her first steps yet so the baby is uh, traveling so everybody wanted to see the baby look at you know how you know not everybody could afford to travel so if they're pa- passing by so raja janak was never said no to anybody whoever offered them food just like patri sir whoever offered them food uh, he would take the food give them the love he was like no 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 i'm i'm a king he was never like that i'm king i'm not going to take food with you or i'm not going to sit with you he would eat and enjoy food with everybody so they had a lot of pit stops while on the way to the hermitage and finally when they uh, reached the hermitage the the guru the the leader of the gurukul ashram the hermitage was standing on the door as if he was expecting sita mata he says ha huh, you are here for your first lesson aren't you little princess so raja janak was like as if you know you knew about that i have to bring her and the, the guru the leader uh, you know i will call him guru uh the head of the hermitage i'll call him guru so he says yes i knew he she was coming for her first uh, lesson so the rishi the guru uh, so guru had little uh, students you know so one of the students uh, took uh, usha minakshi and uh, the baby princess uh, sita into a one hut so they could get comfortable feed the baby and stay in that hut 
And Raja Janak went into another conference room, kind of a hut where other, her, other saints, other rishis were meditating. So that night, uh, everybody went to bed early because they had a long trip. They put, uh, put Sita to bed, fed her uh, bedtime. And uh, so in the middle of the night, uh, uh, Minakshi wakes up. She doesn't see Sita anywhere. Sita is missing from the hut. And uh, she wakes up Usha. Usha doesn't know where uh, the baby is. And the door of the hut is open. They look around and they were very nervous. Where, where could she have gone? So um, then uh, they went to inform uh, Janak Baba and uh, Janak Baba is meditating. So they don't want to disturb. But Janak Baba feels there's somebody at the door and uh, he figures out that they are looking for baby Sita. And so he points to Sita that she's right here sleeping in front of me. And the, both the ladies are confused. How did Sita get there? So in the morning, Raja Janak says she walked to the hut the first time to be taking that energy of all the meditators and she came and sat down and that was her first education and this that night that uh when when uh, Raja Janak was describing to Usha and uh, uh Minakshi in the morning you know imagine your spouses the first time when the child walks or when you saw your own child walk the first time the glow in your eyes so Raja Janak had that glow in his eyes that oh my baby walked for the first time last night so after that night, once the child was, starts walking, there's no stopping, right? So that when that same thing went with uh, Sita Mata. So Sita was everywhere walking, whatever her new capabilities got, got her into. She was always, but one thing she always noticed, she always stopped at the entrance of the Gurukul Hermitage. It felt like some, there was a calling for her. She wanted to go out, but uh, she couldn't go out. Everybody, she wanted to go somewhere, uh, you know, but she was hesitant. She just stopped right. So Raja Janak had instructed uh, Usha and uh, Minakshi that you can follow her, but let her go wherever she wants to. She wa He wanted her to grow in an open, open jungle, open field where she can explore. So don't stop her, but make sure she's okay. So keep an eye for her, but you know, um, they they could not keep her an eye on then another day then they saw that she was walking uh, she was walking to the jungle she uh, crossed that gate and uh, they she took them she led them the little baby took led uh, Usha and Minakshi to an injured animal so she brought that injured animal back to the Gurukul where the, uh, the students of uh, Guruji tried to treat the uh, with the herbs and everything but sadly, that animal passed away in the morning. That really, uh, you know, hurt Sita Mata's feeling because, you know, everybody was dear to her. Any living living thing was very dear to her. That affected uh, Sita Mata on a different level. So Sita, uh, wherever she, uh, and after that, uh, when they came home, Ma, so Sunana Ma says, I feel like you guys have gone a little too long. I missed her first steps. And I hear so many things that she's done in the uh, hermitage. But I was, uh, you know, I feel like she's not talking much because, you know, that animal had really affected Sita. Uh, the death of that animal had really affected Sita Mata. So after that uh, incident, Sita Mata would travel wherever Janak Baba would travel. And uh, so, and she would gain a lot of experience. And she would sometimes, Minakshi says, I would go with her. And if I would not go with her, whoever uh, servant would go with her would come and tell the other servants what happened in the hermitage. And after a few more years had passed away and uh, the Sita got a chance to be at the first place, uh, visit the same hermitage that she visited first time. And she was very excited to meet the new people. And now she's a, a much older girl. So she was even more excited that this was the first place I went. And this was the first time I got my first lesson and how I walked. You know, everybody must have told how we tell our children, you know, what we did, what they did as when they were little. So Sita Mata was very excited. And so Raja Janak goes, do you remember that hermitage that we went to? She says, yeah, yeah, I remember that uh, wounded animal that ended up uh, passing. Oh, you want, you really remember that? Yes, that animal still comes in my dream. So um, she says, uh, uh, do you, uh, so Raja Janak would tells her that, you know, yeah, this is, uh, you know, um, this, this whole incident happened. So, so uh, Sita Mata acknowledges that, uh, yes, uh, you, I, I remember everything. So, um, and then uh, uh, when she sees uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, whole uh, her, uh, people in the, uh, in the hermitage, she was very excited to that. So she kept on, uh, and then, oh, she, uh, then she also tells Minakshi that I am, I am looking for something. 
so she takes minakshi sita mata takes minakshi from the hermitage after she leaves raja janak there she takes minakshi into the deep jungle so she says minakshi what uh, minakshi says what are you looking for am i uh, am i are you going to ask me uh, you know where where are we going she says i'm looking for very thing very specifically so all of sudden uh, she sees that some birds are flying around uh, uh, near sita mata so it feels like sita mata is talking to them and uh, she uh, she's uh, and so finally she gets a message from the birds and she goes further down near the river there's some certain herbs that she plucks and she brings those uh, those uh, uh, plants to the gurukul and she goes to the guruji and she says look what i got you so imagine your own child walking and getting picking some weeds and says mama i got it for you what are you going to say oh sweetheart thank you right so guruji thought she brought some you know wild flowers and wild weeds and so guruji also said oh thank you so much for bringing me she goes no this is for your stomach boil them in the water and it will heal you so apparently guruji is like shocked who told her besides my wife nobody knows about this incident that i've been uh, dealing with the stomach issues so he uh, he asked um, the wife wife says no i didn't tell uh, anything to sita about it they just arrived and then she left for the jungle to get this so the the guru wife the guruji's wife she boiled them and then couple days later uh, he got healed and then uh, janak baba is asking minakshi what happened so minakshi goes if i tell him that the birds talk to sita mata and they told her where to get that certain plant janak baba is, is going to think i've gone crazy so she didn't does not say anything so that was another incident uh, that happened with sita mata in this chapter i'll stop this chapter right here if any anybody has any questions please feel free to ask otherwise we'll continue next week thank you for listening to media masters thank you surabhi ji it was a very good session thank you sir so masters if you have any questions to surabhi ji please go ahead and ask you can unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask questions so thank you for explaining it so beautifully so that was one of the comments yeah sri gar sri Nam- namaste masters uh, namaste surabhi master uh, just just a, a gratitude uh, you know for all the time that you are spending so many new things uh, i'm learning from your uh, you know session as uh, it's so good you know as you are telling i can actually feel that you know this is all happening in front of me so that's how clearly you are actually explaining every simple detail right so very simple details also been you know explained that's why we i could able to at least visualize uh, you know what uh, you know as you are actually talking thank you so much uh, thank you thank you sir your... thank you thank you for your kind words sir sir actually i think that's uh, patri sir's um, hand on my head that blessings that i have from him even though he said he never blesses anybody you know we are all uh, uh, apodipa bhav but i think i have his blessings because a uh, lot of people had said that when i explain they can visualize it and so when i heard uh, the untold story in swadhyay series i felt like you know in hour and a half or two hours lot of details have been missing and uh, that's the reason i've started reading this book narrating in simple language connecting all of you with your own life you know when i said imagine your own child walking for the first time the glow right away you know your mind will go take oh the first time my uh, like my daughter's name is uh, c and my son's name is dhruv oh the first time the dhruv walk you know if i'm in your place and whatever your child's name is you're like oh that's how you know um, ashwarya first time walked you know that thought comes and that smile comes to your face and you can Im- imagine it Im- by incident in quick instant you can connect your soul with raja janak soul that's what my whole target is to get you as much as connected with this book so you can get to the root what sita mata is trying to tell us the love that she has given to each and every person as patri sir has left his body but his soul is still here he's still same way sita mata is still here with all of us in each one of us you know ram ji hanuman ji all this jesus all these uh, you know uh all, all uh, guru nanak dev ji mohammed everybody is all around us you know their urja their energies are with us we as meditators we as humans have to just learn to you know absorb them 
feel them. So that's my goal to, you know, just be a little uh, small drop in the big, big, big ocean that uh, Patriji had given us that whole this family, you know. So just passing on his love to everybody. Thank you. Yeah, well, Thank well you, said, uh, Master. Very well uh, said. And the other thing is also you are very um, taking only, you know, a little bit of time. Right. So not just explaining like for an hour and an hour and a half. Uh, and then, as you said, you know, when you do a one, one and a half hour sessions, there's a lot of details uh, probably might be missing or it might be missing from our, our, uh, the listener thoughts. Right. But, yes. but you have selected that timing also very well. And I thank you. And I also thank all the organizers who actually organize this. Also, another thing that I have noticed is that I like to recap a lot. Remember this, remember this, I use that. If anybody has a, a, a problem with that, please tell me. But the reason I try to recap a lot because, you know, we all have busy lives and sometimes, you know, and uh, I don't know the age of uh, all the participants here. But uh, the first time I read this book to was to my eight-year-old uh, Masi. Masi is mom's older sister. So she always forgot, who is this character? How is this character? So from her, I learned a lesson that, you know, I need to always make a connection, like, you know, reminding the participants that, you know, this is this, this was this. So they don't, they have that interest going on in the story. So if anybody feels that I'm being a lot of repetitive, please tell me and I will correct myself. Okay, because I just want to make sure you guys are getting connected to the book. Thank you. Thank you, Sarabhiji. As Sriji has mentioned, right, uh, the details that you're giving, it feels like as if uh, we are in that particular era and uh, we are seeing things around us. So that is the details that you're providing. So thanks a lot for this session. It was really a helpful one. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you. So masters, now uh, let's start off with the meditation. So let me, last time I had some issues. So let me try again and let me see whether if I'm able to play the, play the music now. So yeah. So can you guys hear that? Uh, listen, Master, can you please reduce the volume a little? Is it fine? Some more. You can little more. You can reduce. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Not so, not too much. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Okay, thank you. So we we'll made it for 30 minutes. Master, please sit comfortably, close your eyes, clasp your fingers, cross your legs, just observe your natural, no thoughts, no mantras to be chanted, just observe your natural breath, be in presence, thank you Master. మనసు శూన్యం చేసుకుందాం ఆ శూన్యంలో మనం విరాజిల్దాం మనసు యొక్క శూన్యంలో ఆత్మ ప్రకాశవంతం అవుతుంది సువిదితం అవుతుంది ప్రస్ఫుటం అవుతుంది శక్తివంతం అవుతుంది తేజోవంతం అవుతుంది ఆత్మ మనసుని శూన్యం చేసుకోవాలి నో థాట్స్ అది ఎలా సంభవం అంటే శ్వాసతో కూడి ఉంటే అది వెంటనే సంభవం ఉందిగా మంది కదా శ్వాస
పైగా కూర్చున్నాం శ్వాస మీద ధ్యాస శ్వాసానుసంధానం
మందుకు మందుమే పరీక్ష ఎంతసేపు నిగ్రహంగా ఉండగలమా ఎవరో మన పరీక్షలు తీసుకోరు మనమే మనం పరీక్షలు రాసుకుంటాం తీసుకుంటాం మనం శూన్యంగా ఉండగలమా లేదా అది మన పరీక్ష Be with your breath. జీవితం అంతా ఒక పాఠమే జీవితం అంతా ఒక పరీక్ష జాగ్రత్తగా పరీక్ష వ్రాయాలి ప్రతి మాట పరీక్ష ప్రతి ఆలోచన పరీక్ష జాగ్రత్తగా మాట్లాడాలి జాగ్రత్తగా ఆలోచించాలి ప్రతి దాంట్లో జాగ్రత్తను అలవరచుకోవడమే ఆధ్యాత్మికత ఒక్క స్వరం వాయించాలన్నా జాగ్రత్త
అజాగ్రత్తగా ఒక స్వరం రాకు వచ్చింది ఏమిటి అజాగ్రత్తగా ఒక మాట మాట్లాడవచ్చింది ఏమిటి అజాగ్రత్తగా ఒక ఆలోచన రావచ్చింది ఏమిటి అజాగ్రత్తగా ఒక చూపు చూపు విసరడం ఏమిటి చూపులో జాగ్రత్త మాటలో జాగ్రత్త యోచనలో జాగ్రత్త కదలికలో జాగ్రత్త సంగీతంలో జాగ్రత్త ప్రతి దాంట్లో జాగ్రత్త తస్మాత్ జాగ్రత్త సుమి బీ ఎవర్ అండ్ కే బీ కేర్ఫుల్ ఇన్ అటరింగ్ ఎనీ వర్డ్ ఎవ్రీ వర్డ్ ఇన్ రిలీజింగ్ ఎనీ థాట్ ఇన్ లుకింగ్ ఎనీ వేర్ బీ కేర్ఫుల్ హౌ యూ లుక్ వాట్ యూ లుక్ వై యూ లుక్ ఎందుకు చూస్తున్నాము జాగ్రత్త ఎలా చూడాలి జాగ్రత్త ఎటువైపు చూడాలి జాగ్రత్త ఎంతసేపు చూడాలి జాగ్రత్త అంతా జాగ్రత్త లే ఊరికే కళ్ళు పాడేసుకుంటామేంటి ప్రపంచం మీద ఊరికే నోరు పాడేసుకుంటామేంటి లోకం మీద ఊరికే పాడేసుకుంటే అంత అంత అనుభవిస్తాడు అనుభవిస్తున్నాం మనం ఊరికే కళ్ళు పాడేసుకుంటాం ఊరికే నోరు పాడేసుకుంటాం ఏం కళ్ళు ఏం నోరులో పాడేసుకునేందుకు నేను ఉన్నాయి ఏంటి అవి జాగ్రత్తగా ఖర్చు పెట్టాలి డబ్బును ఖర్చు పెట్టినట్టు డబ్బుని జాగ్రత్తగా లేకుండా పాడేస్తే ఏమవుతుంది దరిద్రులు అవుతాం మరి మన కంటి చూపు దాన్ని జాగ్రత్తగా పడుచుకోకపోతే నోటిని జాగ్రత్త పడుచుకోపోతే ఏమవుతుంది ఏమవ్వాలో అది అవుతుంది ఎవడు కళ్ళు తిరగకూడదు నోరు మూసుకుని కూర్చుంటాం కళ్ళు మూసుకుని అభ్యాసం చేద్దాం నోరు మూసుకోవడం కళ్ళు మూసుకోవడం మధ్యలో ఉన్న ముక్కులోని గాలి ముక్తికి మరి దారి ఈ కళ్ళ మధ్య నోటి మధ్య ఒక ముక్కు ఉంది ఆ ముక్కులో ఒక శ్వాస ఉంది ఆ శ్వాసం గమనిద్దాం కళ్ళు ఎందుకు నోరెందుకు ముక్కు ఉందిగా ముక్కులో శ్వాస ఉందిగా దాంతో కలిసి ఉండాంగా అది వదిలిపెట్టేసి ముక్కులో గాలి వదిలిపెట్టేసి కళ్ళు పాడేసుకోవడం నోరు పాడేసుకోవడం ఏ మానవులో అవేం కళ్ళు అవే నోరులు ఎవరు కళ్ళు విప్పకూడదు నోరు ఇప్పకూడదు ముక్కులోని గాలి ముక్తికి మరి దారి కాయప టూపిరిలో గని ఉన్నది ఆ గనిని కొల్లగొట్టడమే ధ్యానం అప్రిషియేట్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఫర్ డూయింగ్ అన్ ఆల్సమ్ మెడిటేషన్ టుడే ఫర్ థర్టీ మినిట్స్ thank you so much masters for joining today's session uh thank you so much nitin sir for organizing this and we all will meet same timing coming weekend on wednesday 
at 9 pm thank you dikshita garu thank you all for joining thanks master